Okay, so I know that you have been waiting. I know that you want to know how to do end-to-end -end topic modeling because nowadays we have too much data and we don't know how to do, like what to do with them. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce our speaker, Kayen. Hello. Hello. Hi, Chi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, now I see can you. hear and see you. Good, good, good. So, yeah, like you are a data scientist and, you know, you have been a speaker as well. Uh, we have a lot in common, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know you have been speaking at a lot of conference. You have been speaking in the PyCon Hong Kong as well, which is I am yet to go to there physically. So, um, yeah, so uh, so glad to have you here. And then uh, if your presentation is ready, I'll put it on stage and then you can take us away. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think uh, okay. it's all, it's all. Uh, it's all good. Just a, okay, just a minute. Yeah, I think it's good. You are okay. you're able to see my screen, right? Yeah. We can all see the screen. Uh, okay. There you go. Uh, can you all, can you also confirm whether you are able to see my code as well? Your code is good, so everything is good. Okay. Good. Take us away. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Hello, folks. Uh, this is Kalyan. No, I'm from India, so it's uh, some 11 a.m. in India right now. Uh, so uh, so happy to be part of uh, Pyjamas conference. So this is the second time I'm speaking at Pyjamas, and you know. So honored to be here. So today I'm going to talk about end-to-end uh, -end topic modeling. Uh, so <clears throat> some cheap marketing uh, about me. Uh, professionally, I'm a self-taught data scientist and analytics manager. Apart from my professional stuff, I've been involved with uh, uh, different communities uh, because I love to be involved with different Python and data science communities. And I try to help them and uh, make them grow. So I have a uh, different contributions and different organizations. Uh, and the other thing is like I always love to give back to community. So I always look for an opportunities to share my knowledge in uh, different conferences as she mentioned. And I'm also a passionate mentor. So I love helping people in uh, uh, different uh, uh, in different regions uh, on uh, data science, self-learning or you know, community side. Uh, so what are the possible stuff which I can do from my side? So I'll try my best to help people on, on my mentoring style. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much about uh, me. And uh, so here is the outline for today's talk. We'll start understanding NLP, some overview about NLP, then topic modeling, how the topic modeling works. Then we'll see the popular algorithm called latent direct allocation. Then we'll see some action on uh, topic modeling and then I'll conclude accordingly. So feel free to drop your all your questions and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to answer each and every question for sure. Uh, so without any further delay, let's get started. <clears throat> so what exactly is NLP or uh, what is natural language processing? Well, uh, th this is happening right now with uh, both of us. Now you might be wondering what Kalyan, what are you talking? So you are listening to my words or speeches, sentences, which I'm talking right now, and you are forming some comprehensions from it. So now when we say exactly the same thing to computers to do that, that is called natural language processing. So natural language processing is a field of artificial intelligence uh, that focuses on communication between computers and human in a natural language. So the overall objective of a natural language processing is to make computers understand and generate human language. So that's pretty much uh, uh, about uh, natural language processing definition. Okay, now when we are talking about NLP, uh, usually uh, starts with you know unstructured text or unstructured data. So what do I mean by unstructured text? So let me try to explain you with an interesting example here. Uh, uh, so add core exercises to your daily routine. Uh, uh, of course, you know if you include the core exercises in your you know daily workout routine, you'll build some nice apps in your. Uh, body and of course i wish most of the men would like to have a nice apps in their body right uh, so yeah coming back to the context of uh, nlp here this is something that you know you and i can easily understand uh, what is this sentence all about? Uh, so this is something called unstructured text. When we try to communicate the same thing to computers, so if you if I say this sentence to computers, which computers cannot understand because it is in an unstructured way. To make computers understand, we need to have a structural representation of the same information. So how the structural information looks like is 
so this is how the structural information looks like so so the daily routine here it is an element and we have a sub element called workout and core exercises so which we have written in a structural format so that you know which computer can easily understand and compress this information so this is called a structural data okay now we have a unstructured information and we also have a structured information okay so now the goal of nlp is to communicate between these two unstructured and structured that is why you know nlp sits in between unstructured and structured okay now when we are going from unstructured to structural this is called as a natural language understanding which is also called as a nlu when we want to go from a structure to unstructured which is called as a nlg which is nothing but natural language generation i'm not talking in detail about you know nlu or nlg because you know uh, these are completely altogether different topics which goes again uh, beyond the scope of this talk okay this is a quick overview about nlp in the next slide we'll try to understand some of the use cases which are used in nlp first one is like text summarization <clears throat> text summarization is one of the important use case in uh, natural language processing uh, the best example is like you know you have a large quantities of a text data in uh, various forms like you know magazines or articles so you want to pull out some natural report of those texts uh, uh, so this is where you know natural language processing comes into the picture uh, to solve this problem by removing the unimportant text uh, like unimportant text and also try to convert the text into short semantic text form so that you know you are getting the, the overall the natural report of the particular text and next is like machine translation when you are trying to translate from one language to other language so we need to understand the context of that sentences for example if you are translating from you know english to french uh, uh, or french to english whether you are getting a same context of the sentence or not that is really important because every word has a different set of meanings and uh, and different uh, different types right and most of the times you know when we're doing this translation we often uh, fail and you know we'll get different uh, context of meanings so this is where you no know, nlp uh, solves uh, such problems and the next one is like autocorrect or autocomplete uh, autocorrect is nothing but the best example is like you know whatsapp or we all use uh, whatsapp for communication when we are trying to chat in whatsapp we often you know type some you know uh, wrong words or a wrong sentences and uh, you'll see the correct words popping up on our chat screen or the correct sentences popping up on the chat chat screen so the reason is like you know there is a nlp algorithm running behind the scenes which is you know making correct ourselves to pick the correct words or the correct sentences and same thing with uh, autocomplete as well autocomplete uh, so we often encounter autocomplete in our you know emails like you know gmail or outlook when we are trying to write some emails uh, example if i say that you no know, i'll see you i'll see you so it automatically completes the next word like tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow maybe next week so it auto completes the next word so the reason is like there is a nlp behind all these scenes uh, to make uh, uh, to make it more productive next are like virtual assistants so or chatbots uh, the best example is like alexa siri siri uh, because they are taking human sentences and they are trying to execute those commands what being said same thing with chatbots as well but the chatbot is similar into a, a written language uh, and if you see the rise of chatbots is pretty crazily in uh, every industry these days so no if you take a example of starting from you know uh, uh, from your banking applications to your uh, cab booking or you know movie application so every there there is a chatbot to address all our concerns so the rise of chatbots is increasingly evolving uh, day by day and next is sentiment analysis sentiment analysis nothing but you know when we are trying to purchase a product uh, we we'll definitely look for a reviews uh, for this product right before we actually buy of course most of us will definitely do that and we we'll see whether the product has a, a positive reviews or negative reviews it means that you know it has some positive sentiment or negative sentiment whether those reviews are a serious or uh, whether those reviews are a serious or sarcastic mm -hmm. sorry just to give me just a minute okay so whether those reviews are a serious or a sarcastic uh, uh, meaning that you no know, where so there are some products uh, which are fake but it has a very serious reviews uh, and there are some uh, genuine products it has a uh, no very uh, negative reviews so to you know to solve all such problems right you know nlp plays a very key role in uh, sentiment analysis and finally spam filtering so when we are trying to understand the uh, email message uh, like whether it is a 
the message is real or a spam so so how nlp can identify is by looking at the context of the message or no uh, it also check uh, whether it has a appropriate grammar or whether the words have been used appropriate or not so these are some things of which you know it identifies and conclude that whether the email is a spam or uh, not that's how it filters so these are some of the use cases of nlp and there are also tons of other use cases which have been using in uh, different uh, industries right with this you know we have given a quick overview about nlp and use cases so <clears throat> next we'll uh, jump into our main topic so before you now we actually deep dive into our original topic called topic modeling so let's try to get you know some motivation because in topic modeling is like you know very quite heavy subject so i think uh, i thought of you no know, let's give some motivation first let's get some motivation to understand topic modeling so that you know we'll we'll be you know we'll be excited to uh, understand uh, so what exactly and what's going on in topic modeling okay so how can a single person uh, uh, knows what's going on in a million collection of uh, text documents or you know tons of articles or a uh, tons of email messages so how so it's it's very challenging for an individual alive to you know uh, to monitor collect interpret or make sense of it all so it's quite challenging for an individual to keep uh, monitor and all such things right because there is a tons of information going on on all those areas so how can a single person monitor or uh, focus like what's going on uh, so uh, so over the years like you know an area of a natural language processing called you know topic modeling has has made really great studies in solving such problems so what i am going to say he conclude here is so let's not stress our you no know, tiny brains here so let the machines do the work so uh, so with the help of human intelligence so the reason why i said human intelligence is uh, so without human intelligence there is no artificial intelligence right i am sure you'll definitely agree with the statements so let's make our machines work smartly with our human intelligence now here comes uh, our topic called topic modeling so, <clears throat> so topic modeling so there are so many definitions of a topic modeling which are there on the internet out of which indicate you know very same meaning in a different way so the straight forward definition here is like you know it is a statistical model designed to uncover abstract topics within a collection of a uh, document and topic modeling is also called as unsupervised machine learning technique so why it is called as unsupervised machine learning technique is you need to know the reason behind uh, the unsupervised so if i say that you know there is a the amount of a text data is vast and growing day by day which is indeed true uh, as a text analytics is evolving it is increasingly used in the area of artificial intelligence machine learning and nlp to explore and experiment the data text data in a multiple ways but the thing is but the problem here is text text analysis or text data is not always straightforward uh, for example if let's say you have a large quantities of a labeled text data okay we have a large quantities of a label text data so yeah we have a label data so you can apply a supervised machine learning technique and you can you will get a good result for sure you will get a good results okay which is cool but in most of the real time right so what you encounter is that text data is not structured or labeled so you'll see completely unstructured data or unlabeled data in real time so this is where unsupervised machine learning approach like you know topic modeling can be helped so topic modeling is a form of unsupervised machine learning technique that identifies the hidden relationships in the data so being an unsupervised machine learning technique so, so topic modeling doesn't need any label data to work so so it it can be directly applied uh, to the set of a doc text data and to extract information so that's the beauty of our uh, topic modeling and you know there is no prior knowledge required about the topics in order to work topic modeling this is again and the beauty so it randomly uh, it randomly pulls out the topic so there is no you don't need to give a, have a labels prior or uh, such thing uh, to work topic modeling and it is also called as a probabilistic modeling because the probability is used to discover the latent semantic structures of the document uh, so that's why you know in most of the projects uh, topic modeling is considered as a you know text mining tool so there is a graphic which you are seeing on the right side of uh, this presentation so which
Hey, Kalyan. So maybe you can share your screen again? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. There it is. Yeah, so Perfect. you see my screen, right? <clears throat> yeah, you will see it. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I was uh, I was talking about you know this uh, graphic which I am which you are seeing here on the right side. So this graphic is basically you know it's a uh, it's a representation of a latent detection process using a word document matrix. So if you so this is an example of a topic modeling here. So the columns which you are seeing are uh, corresponding to your documents and you know the rows which you are seeing corresponding to your words and the cells which is uh, here you are seeing it is uh, describing by the number of of words which are there in the document in the dark cells which are seeing here it uh, indicates that you know all these are like you know high frequency words now what is that you know with the topic modeling we can make a group of a documents that are using you know similar set of uh, words and you know that have occurred in similar set of a uh, documents so once you see that all this uh, beautiful word all this end of the day you'll see end of the result you'll see that you know all this comes with a beautiful topics i mean the result will be showcased as a like beautiful topics which you are seeing at the end of this uh, uh, graphic you so you'll see all the dark uh, dark words are indicating as a one line so this is the one so which are nothing but all these are like you know beautiful topics here okay and some of the use cases of uh, uh, topic modeling here are like you know annotation so uh, a topic modeling can automatically uh, labeled uh, or annotate the unstructured data based on the majority topics that drive that drives through uh, them and uh, next one is like seo in search engine optimization so the best example for seo is like you know uh, google uh, uh, in 2018 google has uh, uh, created an announcement to the way at uh, uh, created as the announcement is like you know uh, to improve their search so what they have done is like you know they have added a new announcement to their knowledge graph called you know topic layer basically so the object of this announcement to is to improve their search, search algorithm so google is like also heavily dependent uh, work uses uh, topic modeling in their real time and the next one is like e discovery e discovery is nothing but you know in legal documents process topic modeling can be a savior and it also makes sure to ensure that you know and no important information is missing in those documents so topic modeling plays a key role in the e discovery as well and there are also many other use cases in topic modeling uh, so these are some of the important elements uh, which one should know while working on the topic modeling process so i thought of including these as well so that you know uh, so that you'll have a quick idea while you are actually dealing with the problems of topic modeling so investigate so investigate is nothing but where we are trying to find search or you no know, figuring out the uh, the the large quantities of unstructured data in the text document so once we're done with you know investigate so we look for the basically uh, latent variables so latent variables are nothing but the hidden thematic structures uh, so, so those do not have a, a label but we are extracting those topics uh, from our data sets so once we have done that so we are making into a clustering so as we have seen in the previous graphic so once we have done with the latent variables we have went in finding the documents and we are creating latent variables when the algorithm has applied you will see the all the beautiful topic coming into a cluster so the final output same thing so coming to context of the topic modeling so we are clustering the words with similar expression and also same with uh, similar documents as well so this is how the, our end output results looks like now how topic modeling works so i thought of you know including a you know a real time use case study uh, here to explain you the process how it works in a real time here so i think in organization or every organization we offer offer we i think most of us have encountered a term called you know customer centric uh, uh, meaning that you know organizations have put a strategy where you no know, customers are their first priority because they you know, they are core and heart of the business uh, so without customer there is no organization and without uh, 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 no organization put uh, customers as their least priority i'm sure you will definitely agree uh, with this statement right so so we listen, we always listen to what our customers are saying so to put it in a other way <clears throat> we we listen what our customers are saying through uh, chats or uh, emails surveys or social media posts or the feedback and responding in a 
way we respond them in a way that encourage them to use our product or service once again and even recommend to others so this is how it works in a real time right so when even if when some one of the when some of our customer is satisfied you always spread the word with others to use the service so this is how it works most of the time in a real time but there is a lot of effort and process involved how so as a human being we cannot keep a tab on all such things right because there is a tons of information going on beyond all the scenes so you cannot keep a thing you cannot monitor everything as a person so this is where so how can we solve such problems is the best approach to solve customer centric problem is through with the help of nlp and particularly with a topic modeling so with topic modeling we can effectively monitor and respond our uh, customers in a timely and effective manner and on another note uh, on another note uh, topic modeling can also help and analyze the open ended responses like you know for example our customer reviews or our product reviews or you know our feature reviews so uh, the, uh, so all these are like you know very important information uh, because uh, this can also help to shape our product or service or even encourage our organization growth so i have personally worked on one of the use case similar use cases in my work so i thought of you know including it to explain this process uh, uh, to make you understand how it works in a real time so that's the reason why you know i just included this uh, particular process in a slide by taking you know different uh, icons uh, uh, to uh, to uh, tell you the story about it next is like machine learning <clears throat> uh, so when we always try to explore uh, the ml uh, ai algorithms we always end up with a word called uh, uh, black box so black box refers to machine learning models that gives you a result or you know reach a decision where you don't know how they have showed up the results i mean like how it has showed the results uh, to to explain you in a very simple way so we'll give some inputs to our algorithm uh, to build a model and it gives you some output right so what's happening inside the algorithm is always no a black box and there is a lot of study uh, and bias going on towards this black box again i'll not talk in detail about the black box because uh, which again uh, goes beyond the scope of this talk so here the when it comes to context of the topic modeling we also have a different algorithms in topic modeling but uh, here in our talk so we particularly focus on the lda algorithm so i'll talk lda in, in detail about lda algorithm in the next slides so here we are taking a ldl algorithm as a black box we are trying to understand what are the inputs and outputs of a ldl algorithm so <clears throat> so inputs here uh, for a ldl algorithm are the data sets which are nothing but a collection of documents and this is a black box here so it has a three outputs which are seen here so uh, the first output is a cluster of words so each cluster identifies a topic and uh, now each words and topics have a certain uh, frequencies here uh, and if you also observe this cluster one word can be available in other cluster as well for example if i say that you know there is a word called dog existing in this cluster so the dog might also exist in this cluster and also in this cluster so there is a high possibility of that you know one word can be available in multiple clusters here now if you see the second output under the frequency of words we can see that you know we have a different words and we have a different topics and all together it has a different distributions so you can see how it has been distributed here and finally you can see we have a set of a document and each uh, document has a different set of a topics here uh, for example movie and food so these so these has a combination of uh, these words these two words has a combination of uh, topics which are there in you know in one of those documents so you can see that you know the each of the document has been you know segregated with a different color coded here so this is how the our you know our output of our model comes and you know showcase it so which you will be seeing uh, practically when we move to the hands on part uh so i guess you uh, know <laughs> somehow i guess you know most of us have some you no know, blank faces or you no know, maybe confused faces at this point uh but you know don't worry we'll try to connect all the dots you know uh, by the end of the session so that you know we'll have a fair idea what all we discussed in this uh, overall talk uh, just you know just uh, for now you know just uh, be patient and uh, follow me with the flow uh lda uh, as i mentioned uh, a latent direct allocation is one of the uh, famous algorithm and it is often used in real time and topic modeling uh, so there is a lot of math involved in this algorithm but i thought of you no know, not explaining 
not explain you and showcase you all the mathematical formulas because I don't want to scare you all uh, with all the mathematics here. Uh, so I just you know uh, thought of you know simplifying the process here. Uh, so I'll try to explain it in a very simple way so that you know you can grab the context easily. So you can understand the LD algorithm with the two principles here. So every document is a mixture of topics. So we can imagine that you know every document has a several topic that has certain uh, frequencies or certain proportions <clears throat> Uh, for example, if you take a two topic model, uh, one, one document has 90% uh, of a data science topics and 10% you know, of a cloud computing topics, while the document two has 30% uh, of a cloud computing topics and 70% you know, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, seventy percent of uh, uh, data science topics. And next is like every topic is a mixture of words. So considering the same two topic modeling examples of a business uh, BBC news, where you no know, one topic is all about sports and one topic is all about en entertainment. So the common words used in the sports topic can be like you know country, game, hurdles, or the organizers of the uh, game. So you listen all these words about uh, sports topic. While the entertainment topics can be, you know, movies, web series, or you no know, actor, actress. So the important thing here is like, you know, information can be shared between topics. Uh, meaning that, for example, a, a popular word like, you know, uh, uh, budget can be equally applied in both topics, right? Because budget can be applied in sports, but it can also be applied in uh, movies. So, so this is something uh, very important uh, uh, where LDA plays a key role. And uh, the best part of LDA is it multitask for estimating both at the same time. So that is the beauty of a LDA algorithm here and so uh, so meaning that you know identifying the mixture of word that has been there in every topic and it also look for the mixture of topic that determines in every document so this it do all the multitask both at the same time and it is also very easy to deploy so there is no hurdles you know in deploying the LDA algorithm so it's quite easy the way you do for you now other ML algorithms uh, the process of LD algorithm is again, uh, <clears throat> so what we do is in the first step in the, so I have basically segregated into four stages here. So I'll try to explain what the E stage do and how the overall process works here. So in first stage, we initialize the model. So once we initialize the model, we'll randomly assign the topic to, to each word in each document. So once the random assignment is done, we'll try to calculate the two frequencies here, the topic and word frequencies. The topic uh, frequency is nothing but the count of word distribution of uh, topics in each document and word frequency is nothing but the count of uh, frequency distribution of words in each topic. So once the stage one process is done, uh, in stage two, we'll update the topic assignment for a single word in a single document. Mm -hmm. So how this updation will be done is based on the uh, uh, topic popularity in each document and based on the uh, word popularity in each doc in each topic. So based on the popularity, it updates the topic assignment and there are some conditions here, like you know, it takes some conditional based upon topics and document and words and topics using a dialysis distribution here. So this is where you know your conditional probability comes into the picture in the phase two. So in stage three, what we do is we'll repeat all the uh, two process which we have done in stage one and stage two. So in stage two, we have done for single word and single document. In stage three, we'll do the same process for all the words and all the documents. So I mean, like all the data which we have. And finally, we'll with the iteration of all this process, so we'll be seeing that you know, words are inclining towards a good topics or you know, beautiful topics. Uh, so that's how the output looks like. And finally, we have the important parameters. So all these parameters, uh, I think you should know so that you know you, while you are working with algorithm, so it makes your job easy. So if you are seeing the yellow box here, which is nothing but the number of corpus or the number of uh, documents, uh, uh, data sets which I have. Uh, for, so the, it, it is representing by the M. Let's say you have a 10 documents, so the M will be here, the 10. Here. And if you also see the peach box here, which is nothing but the number of words in the document, uh, which is highlighted by N. So under under the number of words, so, so there can be a many words and one of the words which is representing by a W here. And in the in LD algorithm, every word is considered as a latent uh, a latent or a hidden uh, topics here. So which is always uh, represented by a Z here. <clears throat> 
And there are uh, two important parameters which control the distribution of the uh, uh, document, which is nothing but alpha and beta. Alpha controls the topic per document distribution, and beta controls the topic per word distribution. And I have just included the same parameters explanation here uh, to to get a you a clear understanding about all these parameters. So with this, like you know, uh, we have finished the uh, uh, theoretical uh, aspect or demonstration of a. Uh, um, uh, Topic modeling. Let's see some action now uh, by looking at the code. Uh, okay, so okay, just me. Let me switch to my code notebook now. Okay. All right. So I believe you are able to see my code screen. Uh, so I have in the in uh, downloaded a couple of dependencies uh, before running this algorithm. So so here we'll start with the data overview. So I have taken the ABC Broadcasting Corporation data set uh, of uh, Australian news source, the ABC, and it has uh, basically headlines data of uh, news headlines data over a period of 19 years. So this is like you now quite big data actually. Um, so as usual, I've imported necessary suspects here, like you now starting from you know data manipulating data analysis to visualization and a machine learning library so all these libraries have hey, been uploaded. Kalyan yeah we are a little bit over the time now I we understand that also you want to show us so maybe you can wrap up with the example so we can uh, allow the next speaker to start in a couple of minutes sure sure so yeah so okay so next once i've read the data i've done some exploratory data analysis yeah so i think most of us are aware some i did some data cleaning and all so finally Okay, then I'm, uh, I've built a model here. So I've uh, uh, like you know what I've done is like uh, I've created a term dictionary of the corpus where it takes a unique term based assigning to an index, then converting that list into the headline corpus so to it generates a term matrix based on the dictionary. So now we we'll, we are we are built a, we are building a LDA model here. So I've initiated the LDA model here where I passed my corpus doc i2 word num topic so you can see this uh, parameters here. So once I've built the model, now I'm calculating the coherence score so you can evaluate the model based on the coherence score so uh, so here i've used the umas because of parameters uh, and so we considering the computational power so i've used the umas instead of uh, other uh, <clears throat> other condition here so we got a coherence score here now so this is how uh, my plot looks based on the 15 topics here so what i have done is now i can quickly visualize and showcase the results of a lda model but what i have done is i'll try to also i have also built other models like you know nmf i did the same process which you can which i which i have done in the uh, lda model but the overall uh, but the overall thing which i would like to conclude here is so okay i played with a different so how can we know whether we have built a good model or not uh, or, so this can be accomplished you know while evaluating the models so what i have done is i quickly evaluated all the four models uh, uh, based on uh, the one which i have built so based on that you can see that you know lsi has the highest score and score so the core and score if we have the highest score and score that showcase that you know our model is good and it is performing well so considering based on the four models which are built so lsa has the highest score and score and it has given the good results and have printed all the topics of a lhi here and you can see it has a different scores here and i have also quickly built the final visual scores and you can see this is how the my final visual looks like and uh, so based on all this uh, uh, final visual you can see that you know police and uh, the council uh, words are like most occurring in our algorithm so you can see police here you can also see police here you can also see council council so these are like you know important topics that have been pulled out from our oral algorithm so <clears throat> so yeah considering the time challenge i, I was not able to explain in detail about uh, the, the process but uh, this is how we, we come up with our results and uh, now yeah yeah but, so that's all about the algorithm uh, action process and you know so if you want to study something in detail about the topic modeling uh, you can definitely check out this resources and you know with this, you know, I have concluded my talk. And if you have any feedback, you know, or if you have any feedback, suggestions, improvements, or complaints about me, talk, so feel free to write me in this platform. So I'll be responding each and every message which I get uh, in my uh, in these platforms for sure. Uh, yeah. Until next, and you know, thanks again uh, for having me in the uh, Paisamas, uh, and uh, I'm so happy to, uh, to speak again in the future as well. Uh,